We Christians remember our mortality at Lent, that we will die. And when we die, we will meet our Creator and our Judge, and we will give an account for our works. And so we approach life with humility. We remember death as a friend, not fear it as an enemy. It's not like Ramadan, where it's 30 days of feasting that they just call fasting. Rolling action. So ladies and gentlemen, Lent is upon us. Uh, Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday is just around the corner. When the Western Church has long since forgotten the importance of fasting. The importance of fasting. Is he getting kicked out again? Right. Let's just wait for that little bit of kerfuffle to pass. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, Lent is upon us. It's something that people have forgotten in this world, that the Western Christian and the Christians everywhere have a strong tradition of fasting. Fasting is something that is in the Christian faith. Our Lord said, when you fast, not if you fast, but when you fast. It's taken as a given amongst Christians that we should fast. But we Christians, especially Christians in the West, have stopped practicing this because largely the Western world has de-Christianized. And most Christians, the last time, especially cultural Christians, the last time that they ever received any real discipleship was as a child. So they think that fasting is giving up chocolate for Lent or giving up biscuits for Lent. That's childish behavior. That is Lent for children, not for adults. Lent for adults means that you go without food for hours of the day and that when you eat, you eat like a vegan. No meat, no dairy, no eggs, no fish, no meats at all. You eat vegetables, you eat beans, you eat tomatoes and fruit, no olive oil. You eat a basic diet. And I want to challenge every Christian who can hear my voice. Take up the practice of Lent like an adult. Take up the practice of fasting like an adult. I know personally someone, a friend of mine, who went without food for 40 days. No food for 40 days. That was the Jesus fast. Don't do it unless you're healthy and you spoke to a doctor. Because after 13 days, your extremities start to die. They stop receiving blood and you need to massage them to get the blood back into them because the body thinks you're starving to death. I don't encourage you to do that unless you're well. I encourage you to do the more traditional fast of going vegan for Lent. Many Christians will not eat from sunrise until a chosen hour in the day. And each person must choose that hour according to what is a sacrifice to them and to what they can reasonably bear given 
their physical condition. If you are ill or weak or pregnant, your fast should only maybe just to give up breakfast and then to start eating as a vegan from 12 o'clock. But men who are healthy should fast far longer. Now I've already decided what I'm going to do for Lent. It does involve going vegan. But I want to challenge all of you cultural Christians and all of you that have an interest in the idea of the Christian faith. Learn about our spirituality by taking the Lenten fast. I challenge you to go 40 days as a vegan. And I want to give you some secular reasons why you as a non-Christian might want to do Lent this year. One, you'll get healthier. You will lose weight. Two, it will help the planet. Eating as a vegan reduces the carbon footprint. Three, eating vegan is going to teach you a tradition, a practice of what it looks like to eat your five a day. You'll know what it means to eat five a day. But when you're doing this as a non-Christian, think as the Christians do. We Christians use Lent to reflect upon our inner man, upon our soul, upon our heart, and upon the habits of our mind. We think about how do we think about ourselves, our place in the world, and the world around us. Use Lent as an opportunity to reflect upon your life. How can you be better? How can you be better? Fasting for the Christian is also about mourning. About mourning our sin. About mourning where we have offended God in our lives and resolving to do better. What can you do better? What habits of yours can you change? to be a better man, to be a better woman, to be a better mother, to be a better father, to be a better husband, to be a better brother, to be a better sister, to be a better employee, to be a better manager. This is what Lent offers you as an opportunity. So I challenge you all to take the Lenten challenge. It's not like Ramadan, where it's 30 days of feasting that they just call fasting. We don't do that as Christians. If your calories don't decrease, you haven't fasted. And as countless studies have shown, when Muslims do Ramadan, their calorie count goes up, not down, because they fast during the day and then they gorge during the night. As a Christian, you cannot do that. You must limit your meals. You must limit them to one main meal a day and no more. You may have two pieces of fruit as a snack or something the equivalent thereof a handful of something as a snack, but it must be vegan. We don't do the fasting of, we don't do the feasting of Ramadan. It has to be a real fast. And link your fasting with prayer. Praying for the intentions of those in your fellowship. Praying for the church praying for yourselves, praying for your family, praying for your community, praying for those around you. And finally, Lent must be connected with alms giving. 
Charity to the poor is an essential part of Lent. Alms giving is charitable giving to the poor. So that money that you save by not spending it on food, add to your tithes, add to your offerings and give it to Christian charities who are supporting Christians in need. Find the Christian charity that you want to help and give your Lenten alms to those charities. Any questions? Any questions? Uh, not yet. I'm sure something will occur to me at a later date. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can guarantee. Okay. When does Lent start here? So, when does Lent start? That's a question from the brother. Depending on whether you follow the eastern right or the western right. Lent begins tomorrow for the Eastern Rite and on Wednesday for the Western Rite. And we start Lent on the Tuesday by having a big feast, a meat feast that we call Shrove Tuesday, where you use up all your eggs, all your milk, all your dairy and all your protein. That's where pancake comes Pancake Day comes from. It's a Christian celebration, a Christian custom. So if you're going to do pancakes on Tuesday, you're being like the Christians anyway. So why not be like the Christians for the next 40 days? Ash Wednesday is called Ash Wednesday because we pray burn the prayers that are written down in the church into ashes and then every person in the fellowship is marked with a cross on their forehead with the words remember O man that thou art dust and thou shalt return unto dust repent and believe the gospel we Christians remember our mortality at Lent that we will die and when we die we will meet our creator and our judge and we will give an account for our works and so we approach life with humility we remember death as a friend not fear it as an enemy any other questions any questions going once? The, any questions going twice? Any questions going twice? The God of Okay. Okay. So let me just deal with this point this brother raised. He said the God of the Middle East is called Allah. Yes, pagans in Arabia used to worship a god called Allah. Uh, pagans. pagans used to worship a god called Allah. And Christians and Jews before Islam used the word Allah in the same way that we use the word God. However, when a Muslim says Allah and when a Christian says Allah, and when a Jew says Allah, the God that they believe in are different, not the same. The only thing they have in common is the name and nothing else. They don't teach the same. They don't believe the same. They don't act the same. The God of Arabian Christians is Yahweh, which is the same God as the Jews, and which is the same God as Christians around the rest of the world. That name is Yahweh. Okay. Good.